What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and today we have a very special guest. Edith, how you doing? Welcome to the podcast. Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing I'm I'm doing amazing. Thank That's you for coming. Good. On. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so look, before we get started, <laughs> I want to go ahead and tell the people how I came across your page. So me and Edith, we're both in a SEI group started by and for people with spinal cord injuries and these types of groups, they're for us, and it's a great vessel to where you can get to, you know, pass along information, share stuff, and for anybody out there who is looking to join the SAI group or want to or are curious about them, I highly suggest them because that's how I came across you, and that's how I came across a lot of other people out there who do come onto the podcast and share their stories, and it's just an amazing way to pass along information and also get information, so I just kind of wanted to share that and Edith, thank you for coming on to the podcast. Um, and yeah, that's how I, that's how I really kind of came across your page. Um, I'm the one that go. I'm the one that went and sent the follow. I know some people don't want to follow people, you know. So, but but I be sending the follow all the time. So, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. You know. No. No. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so look, let's get started at the very beginning. Okay. Just go ahead. Tell us a little bit about you, like your age, where you're from. Um, how old are you? Uh, if you're married or have any kids, and maybe just one little fun fact. Well, I am originally from Mexico, but I was brought to the United States when I was five, and um, I've been here now for 25 years. I will be 30 this year. Okay, congrats. In September. <laughs> Thank you. And I have four lovely, beautiful kids one princess and four boys. I am currently married and um well fun i really don't have money fun facts i guess i'm just i'm always home with the kids i just love and do everything around for my kids that's what's up okay so, and, and also how long have you been married we've been married for 12 years whoa oh so you got married young okay so you was married like 16 17 when you got married no, we were eighteen. Oh, eighteen? Okay, okay. Yeah, we were. No, we we were both. Yeah, we were both about to turn eighteen when we decided to get married. Oh, twelve years. Ooh, you, you know what? what? What's the secret, though? Tell us the secret. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of ups and downs, but uh, he has a lot of patience for me, and I'm the one that's moody all the time, and he. So it, it takes a lot of patience and a lot of communication. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and also, how long? I mean, uh, what level is your injury for the people out there who don't know? I am a T four, T five, incomplete. Okay. Okay. And also, for the people out there who don't know, is that a little bit more higher or a little bit more lower? It's a little bit more higher. Like, um, well, for me, it's under. It starts right under here, all around, like under my breast. Yes. Okay. And also, how long? How long have you been in a wheelchair? Like how long? How long ago was your was your actual SCI injury? This year it'll be six years in May, Labor Day weekend. No, not Labor Day. I'm sorry, Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know what? And this is a question that I like to ask everybody out there. How do you feel when that day comes along? Are you excited? Are you happy? Are you you know like a little bit moody? How are you when that day comes along? There's a lot of mixed emotions, I would say. Um, I remember, I usually, like, remember, oh, on this day, I was doing this at this time. I was doing that. Um, and then I start getting sad once, it, like, around the time that gets, it gets closer to what, what when would happen to me. Mm -hmm. So it's just mixed emotions, I guess you can say. Sometimes I want to be left alone. Sometimes I'd rather be with my family. So it just, it just really depends. Mm -hmm. You know, for me... Like, I avoided that day so much that sometimes I would actually, like, forget the day and I wouldn't, and then I would, uh, like, remember, like, afterwards. So, just mm -hmm. like you said, it's a lot of mixed emotions, but, you know, some people out there, they look at it as a second birthday, a second life day. So, some people yeah, actually yeah. have, like, a positive outlook on it. And I feel like that when I started having a more positive outlook on it, that day became more bearable. You know, it wasn't mm -hmm. as bad as far as, you know, that day. And also, I would say that day isn't the worst part. I feel like it was always leading up to that day. 
You know, so that, yeah. I, I feel like that that was when I was the most depressed because I would I would run through my head like, oh, damn, like I was doing this and this and that before my I mean, before that day or, you know, like mm-hmm. I, like it's just so vivid. And I feel like that, yeah. you know, like you you re, you replay that all the time. And it's just something to where, like, if a certain smell passes your nose that you like, damn, like I remember that smell from around that period. And yeah, things like that can just be so vivid. So it's just one of those things where. It is what it is, but now that I've been in the wheelchair for ten years, going on eleven, is it's more wow. so yeah, it's more so it's more so like a you know, like an extra life day, like an extra birthday, because it could be ten to eleven years where, you know, I've been dead, you know, so but it's not. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm still here. I'm I, I I still get to see where the world, you know, is going and has been and also I, I get to meet so many amazing people out there like yourself. You know that who, you. where where I wouldn't have you know came across or even probably spoke to if it wasn't for this injury. So you know it's a lot to be grateful for, uh, like when it comes to that day and this injury. So it's just I know it can be tough sometimes, though. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So so growing up, did you know anybody that was in a wheelchair like at all? You know what? Actually, um, I believe I was like. 1920 I, I was a pca for somebody that was a quadriplegic oh for real <laughs> yeah and i i mean i liked yes i really liked the job and i stuck around um for a while it was like through a college um it was like through a college thing it was called i remember it was called student experience and it was just all college students um that could just get t- different timings for um to be PCAs for people that, I mean, needed it, of course. And I just, I just did it for this guy. I didn't want to do anybody else. And, um, I really liked him, but he was just really far away from my, from where I lived. It would took me like 40 minutes to get there every day. So I just had, we had a cut. Like I just, I told him, I'm sorry. I just can't come around anymore. Okay. But I really liked, I liked working with him. And to be honest, when I, when I got injured, I was like, I really want to call him. I want to talk to him. Now I understand a lot of things that he, like that was going on with him, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, no. Well, well, did you ever reach out to him? I did. I did, and he was in shock. I call. I remember I called him because I I had forgotten. I still had his number like in my um in my cell phone, and when I reached oh, out, yeah. he was like, "What." Yeah, I was really in shock and asking me like how I was, and he. He was like, well, I don't really have much to say, but get all the help that you can from people that are in wheelchairs around you. Um, and he's like, and be thankful that you have a family because he was an older guy and he, I mean, he stayed single. So, so he was just like, be thankful and be patient that you have <laughs> with your little ones because it's going to be hard. Yeah. So he tried to give me the best advice he could too. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then what? What did that job actually like consist of? Like, what did you do on like a day to day basis? On a day to day basis, well, I was a morning PCA, and I would come okay. in um, around eight eight a.m. and I would help him um, get out of bed, to give him a a shower, and um, just get him ready for his day. Brush his teeth. Dang. Okay. So now you know, <laughs> like, like that's a little different because I've never really spoke to anybody. Who had I? I wouldn't say that type of background, but I would say had um, like that type of insight on like the SEI injury before the injury. Because I know for me, I did have an uncle that was in a wheelchair, but at the same mm-hmm. time, I really didn't kind of see how he went about his day to day life, you know. But yeah, you doing that job, you're able to see you know how he conducts his day, what he does, what you have to do for him. So being mm-hmm. able to see that and then you kind of going into your injury. I know it could have been a little bit of, a little bit scary, but you know at the same time you got a little bit more knowledge than the than the average person because you know you you've actually helped somebody go through it. Yeah. So dang, dang that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. And and then also you know like a spinal cord injury is one of those things that you don't really I would say understand or really know too much about until you actually have one. Yeah. So, okay. Dang, that's crazy. So, you know what? So, what? okay, so since you did work that job, what was your perception of people that were in wheelchairs? 
Well, you know what? I just hated whenever I would hear somebody, like, complain about life and they were able-bodied. Like, I would just, you know, be with him in the mornings and he had actually, like, he had to stay, um, for a while that I was working with him, he had to stay in bed because he had bed sore, um, sores on his back and, um, he would just, you know, I would leave and I, he could watch me out the window walking away and I was just like, I felt so bad, like, why is life like this for, for other people, you know? And whenever I would come across anybody that would just complain about the littlest thing, like, oh, it's raining today or, oh, my back hurts. And I would just be like, shut up. Like, you can walk. You can do things other people can't, like, just because I knew him. So I just, I, I mean, like everybody else is probably watching us now or like sees us in the uh, mall street wherever they feel bad for us i felt bad for him mm -hmm. because he would never leave his house he lived with his dad and he was always just there chilling and i was just like what do you do like all day you know yeah so yeah i don't know i don't know what else to say <laughs> oh no, that's fine i do feel like when it comes to this injury sometimes we could get a little comfortable with you know being to ourselves and you know being alone i feel like that that's one thing mm -hmm. that we we really kind of learn and then we also get really comfortable with it because i know for me i did as well i got real comfortable comfortable with being alone being by myself to where you know i could be by myself all day and have an amazing day you know but at mm -hmm. the same time it's really not healthy you know it's not healthy because yeah. you know at this at the same time i feel like i lost a lot of my social skills i feel like yeah. you know it got real comfortable being you know in a crowded place it got it got real awkward sometimes me you know talking to people i feel like my conversations with people were different i feel like you know how i conducted the conversation was different how i went about the conversation was different and it's like it's 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 something that's really awkward and cringy to really talk about because you know you went through that and you know sometimes you kind of look back <laughs> on the things that you said and you're like i can't believe i said that shit you know yeah <laughs> yes but it's because you've been isolated for so long it's like your social skills just like they kind of really diminish you know and mm -hmm. then you know in your 20s when you should be out there you know in college you know getting to know people dating and all this stuff you know it you uh, like you kind of lose all that because you're in the house all the time you get the spinal cord injury you don't want to go nowhere and i feel like for me like that's one thing that i kind of had to really learn how to kind of get back out there and hang around people. And, you know, still to this day, I do deal with it because sometimes I really don't even want to go nowhere. I could really care less yeah. somewhere. I can have fun in my house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like now that um, I'm like this, and I mean, my, I have three of my kids go to school and I stay home with the baby. And um, I just feel like I have so much time to think about everything that I, I open my mouth a little too much sometimes and I'm just like, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> now, trust, trust me, I definitely understand. But you know, that was that's one thing that I really like about the spinal cord groups, you know, and then the chats out there because you do get to interact with people that are in you know the same situation or of you as you or something similar, and then you know, you, uh, like you can kind of open up and talk to them in a way that you wouldn't to normal people because they can't really yeah. relate to you. But, you know, like you can really say something in a chat that you normally wouldn't say because you because you know that they will understand you. You won't really be embarrassed mm -hmm. by like, like, I'm pretty sure you've heard and seen some of the things in that group chat <laughs> where you're like, damn, I can't believe he really just said that. But at the same time, it's yes. not really as cringy because you, you know, you dealt with it or you deal with it. So it's just yes, yeah. So trust me, I still see stuff in that in that chat where it's like, whoa, I can't believe you said that. So especially the guys. Yes. Oh hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. That's why I just be sitting back, I be observing because a lot of things that they talk about, like I like what Chino said today. Like I actually called him and I asked him. I was like, yo, like yo, what's the problem? Like uh, like you need help in that area or something like that. And like uh, so like just a lot of times I just be observing to see what people <laughs> be talking about because like they can get wild up in there. You know. Oh yes. Yeah, but but then it, but then again, at the same time, that's why I, I recommend the women to really get out there and get into those women groups because, again, y'all bond is 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 amazing. You know, so trust me, get out there, talk to the women with the spinal cord injuries because y'all got y'all got the deep them deep groups. All right, y'all got some cool groups out there. So yes, 
Mm -hmm. I have to I have to look around for those, but yes, I do want to, because the boys are something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they wild, <laughs> they wild, and also you know, like again, you know, try to go to the Rolex experience. You will meet a lot of women out there just like yourself. You know, with the same mm -hmm. level of injuries, similar level of injuries, and they're just. They turning up out there. They having fun. They got people, you know, guys coming to the hotel. It's wild. It's, it's, oh. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> you know what? That's the crazy thing because I got to see the women interact like that. And these women had only been in a wheelchair for like less than a year. And I'm like, damn, they moving like this. But it was really cool to see, though. You know, it was mm -hmm. it was really cool to see. And then I went with my wife. So it was like both of us was kind of seeing this at the same time. And we were just like, whoa, mm -hmm. it's like this over here. Like, you know, but, you know, it's really a sight to see because you get to see, you know, people out there just like yourself. That's really just out there just having fun. You know, so it was cool. It yeah, was cool. It, it's exactly the name. Like, like, it's really an experience. Like. No lot hands down. It's really an experience. Mm -hmm. I really want to try. I, I do want to try it out. I want to get out of my comfort zone, but it's just really hard. Like I've always been, like I guess I need a security blanket. I guess you can say, and that's my husband. And I never really go out without him. And most of the time, it's like, okay, who takes care of the kids? I really don't like leaving my kids anywhere. I feel bad. I feel you. So uh, we have to get out of that comfort zone. Mm, go by yeah. myself. Yeah, we all do. We all do because I feel like that my security blanket is my wife too, as well. So mm -hmm. it's definitely understandable. Okay, so mm -hmm. so I remember you saying before that you got that your injury happened on Memorial Day, right? Or was it Labor Day? Mm -hmm. No, it was Memorial Day weekend. It was a yeah, it was Memorial Day weekend. It was a sun Sunday morning, Sunday like, morning. Early, like early Sunday morning. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, so. Getting into that day, how was that day going for you? Was it a good day, bad day? Was it sunny outside? Like, how did that day initially feel for you? It was such a beautiful, sunny spring day. Um, I remember my husband got up and he would take the kids to church. I, the baby was, I had a baby back then. He was just six months and we would, sometimes uh, we wouldn't, I wouldn't go to church with him and my husband would just take the older two kids. And he, I remember, um, I remember perfectly could find like everything I chose out for them to wear to church, how I did my daughter's hair. Um, and then after church, he, he came to pick me up and we went out to eat with his mom. And it was just a beautiful day. Like I was just like, uh, wow, I have so many, even I still remember I, I told him, I was like, I have so many plans for us to do this summer. I don't want to be stuck inside the house. And uh, yeah, we went to eat with his mom and after that, I was going to go out with some friends that night, so we just went home, chilled for the rest of the evening, and then I left. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, now, now, I would say getting into your story, you got the floor. I, <laughs> I, 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 I won't. I won't interrupt you. Um, well, you see, I was, I don't know, I mean, it's kind of straight to the point, and it was after I went, like I said, I was going to go out with some friends that night and, um, I went clubbing. I had fun. I was, I didn't, I didn't drink or anything because one, I was breastfeeding and two, I had, I was the one that was going to drive everybody home and, um, just, you know, driving on the freeway, just very randomly, a car pulls up next to me and like pairs up next to my, my truck. And all I remember was my windshield shattering. No, yeah, my went my my window shattering, and I remember hearing. I can still to this day hear that noise so clear, like how it shattered. And I just remember air coming in, air coming in, and the people that were in the car with me were like, "What's going on? Like, pull over." And from there, I just knew I couldn't move my legs. I just remember telling them, "I can't move my legs." I can't pull over. And the person that was sitting right next and in the back behind me, he's like, there's blood all over me. And like where I was driving, there was a big curve and I don't know how I managed to, but I did not crash into anything. And I actually pulled over to, to one of the sides of the freeway. And like, um, God really had my back that night. There was a nurse right behind us. 
in the freeway and she stopped to help me and to she pr put pressure on my on my wound to so I wouldn't bleed out and I believe that I mean that was the one of the biggest angels that was sent to me that night um I could have bled out why because that bullet hit my aorta it nicked my aorta it punctured both of my lungs and I mean it hit, it um fractured my my spine That's, mm. So, so at the club, was there any altercations that that may have led up to this, or or was it just as random as as you said it? Very random. Um, I guess I don't know. I mean, there wasn't any. Alt I didn't. I wasn't the type to fight or nothing. Um, just very random. Damn. I was there with just you know just to have fun. I I was there. I, I usually like I go out I would go out have fun but I would never say like till the end like to see what was because you know at the end of the at, at the end there's always fights but I was just we even I remember we even got out early from the from from where we were because I we I was just like okay this is not it that night I remember perfectly I was like I could be home I could be home with my kids like this is so boring yeah. but I wasn't drinking or nothing I mean and everybody else was having fun and I I was getting kind of getting tired of babysitting everybody yeah oh so, okay so you know the <laughs> the funny thing is that before I left my house, I couldn't find my ID. I couldn't find my car keys or my house. Well, the car keys and the house keys. And um, I was going to wear like a waist trainer, like to snatch my body up more. And I couldn't find that either. Like I just couldn't find anything that I, that I wanted to wear or that in my... And I was just like, you know, afterwards, I was just like, well, those were so many signs that I shouldn't have gone out that night. And I still did. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I do feel like, you know, I do hear a lot of people's stories and they do say, you know, it was so many things that, you know, led up to, you know, me possibly changing my mind on if I should go out or not or if I should go to work that night or, you know, like, like, it's like. I feel like that that's one thing that we really just keep replaying. Like, imagine if I wouldn't have went out or, you know, yeah. you know like, it, like maybe imagine if I wasn't driving or something like that. So, so out of everybody that was in the car, are you the only one that was hit? Yeah. What? Okay. So while you're driving and you see the window shadow, does anybody hear the gunshots? No, they just everybody that I talked to just says that they thought like some uh, a window had hit my my window, like a rocket hit the window or something. Maybe. I'm sorry, I don't know what I just said. Yes, like a rock a rock had just hit my window. I'm just I I got lost in the moment there. I just started thinking about it again. It, try, you, you know what? I actually understood you, even though you really didn't even say it. Like so, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So. And what's crazy is I was going to ask you, you know, what happened, but you answered it for me because you said that all you remember is just not being able to feel your legs. Like, do you know how fast you were going? Mm, probably 60 miles per hour. 60 miles an hour. And a car kind of just like slowed down itself. I, I guess because the next like I just kept I remember I kept blocking in and out of like what was going on and. I remember my cousin was a. Uh, she was sitting right next to me, and she's. I the next thing I remember, like I remember a little like driving on the curve, like driving that curve, and I wasn't driving like straight, obviously. So, um, I just remember she helped me pull the car over, and she moved my leg from the from speeding to um to the brake, and I just remember like it was just like a clear light, like just I looked down and she was moving my leg, and it just looked like a bright bright light. And then after that, I blacked out again, and I don't. I next thing I knew, I was in the hospital. So, so whenever that happens, where does the bullet actually go in at? It went in right here um, on my left shoulder, and it broke my humerus bone as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So while while all this is going on, take us to that moment. Because I know for me, whenever my lung got hit, I know how it felt. I know how, like, just in my, 
Like, I was just in my head so much just thinking about, like, just don't panic. Don't panic because you're going to make the situation so much worse. And it's just going to be that much more scarier. So I know how it feels to have your lung, like, punctured and just not being able to breathe. So, like, it's one of those things where, like, I feel like that that's one of, I would say, like, my most like feared like types of things is just not being able to breathe it's just so scary now because i went through that mm-hmm. like how was that how was that for you because you said not one lung was hit but both your lungs was hit so yeah, so was it like yeah so like how did that actually feel like as far as like maybe pain because me out me i could feel the pain but not being able to breathe just overshadowed all that so yeah. So like, how did that feel for you? As far as like maybe like pain, maybe just not being able to breathe. To be honest, I didn't even know what was going on. I didn't know that I had gotten shot or anything. Like, yeah, I really did. I just knew I just couldn't move my legs to from the to from to move it to the brake. And. Um. And did anybody else in the car ever tell you anything about, you know, like what they saw or like, did anybody see like the car or like what kind of car it was, what type of color it was like, like, like did anybody tell you anything like different, like, you know, hearing back? Because for me, I had a recollection of me getting out the car myself. But when I talked to somebody who was there, they said, no, we had to pull you out the car. So it was kind of, mm-hmm. it was kind of like I saw something that really didn't even happen that I really felt yeah. like I saw vividly and like, I felt like I went through, but it really didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, no, nobody just, everybody just tells me that, um, that I was just bleeding a lot and I couldn't move. And afterwards, I mean, it's stupid because they never caught the guy. They didn't have enough evidence apparently. And a kid that was driving home from work, he said that he seen the car like from miles back, just speeding down the freeway, and he actually took the the plates from the from the car, and that car was um it was rented. It was rented, and then um it's funny because the sergeant that was doing my case, he went like to talk to the person that rented, and it was a girl, the guy's girlfriend. And the girlfriend's like, oh, well, he left uh, to Florida for some time. Like, I, I'm down, like, to give you everything I know, tell you everything, but he left. And apparently he had taken the car to the shop, like, the day after. Because the, the right mirror, um, the right outside mirror had, um, like, I guess he shot at the, at the mirror, too, when he was trying to shoot at me. What? So, so he, had, he had to fix it. So they had to drop the case for lack of evidence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, maybe it's one of your next questions or I don't know, but I don't care for him to be in jail. I don't, I already lost all the time that I did with my kids. And that's like the, you know, you don't, you can't get that back. And the only thing I really want to know and is why, why me? You know, I mean, it's it's not right to do it to anybody, but why? If you seen, I w- it was a woman driving. Why? Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, I believe in karma, and I know karma's gonna get him back sooner or later. And I don't want anything to. I don't want. I I just I just want to know why. That's all. Do you, yeah. do you ever feel like that if you could reach out to him you would? Yeah. Do you know who it is? But, no, the police never wanted to tell us cuz they thought we were going like my family was going to do something to him. And I mean so this um uh, sorry. Um this last last year when I before right like the weekend right before my anniversary I called the sergeant and I was like, "Hey, you know, what's I want to know what's going on?" And he's like, well, you know, he left back to his country. And that made me cry because I'm just like, I want to know why. Like, I was so frustrated. I'm like, I don't care for him to get jail time. I just want to know why. Yeah. So he's free in his country now. Yeah. Damn, that sucks because I feel like, you know, 
when it comes to anything sometimes, I feel like that, you know, us not having the answers that we want, it could really like eat us alive. You know, like even in a relationship, you know, but yeah. you know, you having you having questions to something I would say as as traumatic as this, I would say I know it's something that you think about a lot. And I know it's something that I would think about a lot. I like I don't know, like for me, I'm 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 like guys are more like revengeful. Like I don't know how mm-hmm. females are because I'm not a female, but I know guys like we we just want revenge. We can't really accept, you know, people doing something to us and not having no get back. You know, so yeah. you know but but I definitely could relate to you and understand just, you know, wanting questions and then not being able to have, you know, the answers to them. And then, you know, really, really just having to accept the fact that maybe you really won't get the answers. And I know, yeah. I, like, I, I really couldn't, like, I don't know how I would get over it. So how would you say that you kind of deal with that? Because it's something that you really can't kind of get the answers to. I mean, I just know that I was left in this world for my kids. Like, that's all. Like, I don't think about, oh, you know, it's like, like others in the group, like, oh, it's my, my life, my life day or whatever. I'm just like, okay, my kids have their mom. My kids need their mom. So I need to get over it because I'm like, nobody else is going to love my kids the way I do. Exactly. So that's, to be honest, that's what really pushed me through to this day. Okay, and <laughs> and have you have you have you been able to have any kids since your spinal cord injury? How was it? How was it being pregnant and paralyzing? How was that experience? I would say being pregnant. You know, since you understand, since you since you've been pregnant before, and then since you've been pregnant, you know, after. How would you say that the experiences kind of relate to each other? And how different are they at the same time too? Because I'm kind of curious. <laughs> It was very different. What? Uh, like yeah. How? It was, first of all, I had thought I had COVID and I thought I was dying. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I mean, with my other three kids, when I was, when I could walk, it was just, you know, morning sickness the first three months and then everything else was rainbows and unicorns. And with this baby, with, um, no, I was... First of all, I had a uh, really bad withdrawal from my medications because I, I, I decided not to take any of my meds um, when I got pregnant. Well, I mean, when I found out I was pregnant because it was a surprise. Um, and then morning sickness was not more than just the mornings. It was all day, every day for nine months. For real? Yes, I lost a lot of weight. I had gestational diabetes. And that doesn't even run in my family, so it was just really shocking. Like, um, I don't know, it was just, to be honest, it was hell, but I would do it all over again for another baby. For real? Yeah. Do you but want, do you want no. okay, so, okay, so then that kind of answers <laughs> my next question. Do you want another baby? I would love, because see, it's only one girl and three boys, and I would love another little girl, but my Of course you old. would. You did, look, yeah. look, the women always want girls, I feel like. But you know what? You did get some that want a boy, too, so. But it's understandable, yeah. you, you know, so, okay. So mm-hmm. what are their ages? My daughter is 10, and then I have a 8-year-old, a 6-year-old, and the baby just turned 1. Okay, okay, mm-hmm. okay. So, yeah. so... I mean, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but how was the labor process, you know, versus, you know, being, you know, not being paralyzed, then being paralyzed? Like, you ain't got to go through it. It's just like, how was it? You know, was it like more difficult? Was it like you was kind of like, just like, like, uh, like, what are y'all doing down there? Or like, you know, like, how was that part? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, I wanted things so different. I mean, I wanted to do natural labor and I, I wanted to do everything like, just like I did with my other kids, but this baby did not want to turn. He was breech. So his head was up here instead of turned uh, upside down. And, um, they just decided to do a C-section. So nothing went out the way I wanted it to go. Okay. Did you feel like any pain Mm -hmm. or any like pressure down there or anything or no? I actually could feel the contractions. He was born three weeks before he was supposed to be born. And I just, I remember laying in, laying on the side of my bed that day, just putting my head on the side of my bed. And I could feel those contractions every five minutes. And I was like, I, it's time. Uh, oh, um, 
Oh, so your um, water didn't break at all? You just started feeling contractions? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just started feeling contractions. I, my water didn't break nothing. I mean, I, I guess my my labor was just starting, I guess you could say, when I went into the hospital. And they just were, they were like, well, we can send you home or you can, for to you to go into um, late, active labor and then come back when your water breaks. Or you, we can do... Uh, a C-section, and I just was scared to get a uh, autonomic dysreflexia, um, because that was a possibility. A possibility, so I was just like, no, I'll stay and I'll just get the C-section. It was a really hard decision for me, but I mean, I had to do it. Okay. So. Okay. So. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, is there is there any advice that you would give to any women out there who are paralyzed and you know maybe? Maybe they want to have kids or they're pregnant right now. Is there any advice that you could kind of give them? Um, enjoy it as best as you can because, I mean, it's not the same for everybody. Um, I did have my good, my good days, but um, enjoy it as best as you can because the transfers get really hard. And then, especially, like, from the, to the shower. <laughs> I, ne- Damn, um, I didn't think about that. Yeah, they can get really, really hard. And even to change, like, turning around, it was, I would, I would, like, let's say I had to turn to my right side, I would start getting super nauseous and just sit up in the middle of changing to throw up. Like, it was really bad. Okay. <laughs> you see, you see, that kind of gives us a little insight. That kind of gives us a little insight on, you know, because, you know, I know for me, gaining a little weight, my transfers got a little bit, like I could feel them a little bit more on the shoulders and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I could only imagine, you know, like just like, I don't, I mean, I couldn't imagine, you know, being pregnant and then having to do transfers, having to, you know, get into the car, get into the shower and stuff like that. Cause I know how hard it is just being, you know, a guy being paralyzed. So I couldn't even imagine, you know, how that would be being pregnant, you know, and then being paralyzed at the same time, having to do those things, you know, so I, I, def- yeah. I definitely <laughs> commend you. So. <laughs> Thank you. I, I know, I know, I know it wasn't easy. So, yeah, it was not easy, but I, like I said, I do it all over again. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Because I feel like us guys, I feel like us guys, like me, I don't like pain. So, I, so in mm-hmm. my head, I feel like that, like, I would say, like, the worst pain a woman can go through, like, I would feel like would be being pregnant. But then, like, you hear, mm-hmm. like, no, I want to do it again. I want another baby. I want another, like, I could do it again. I could have somebody else's baby for them. And it's just like, well, why would you want to yeah. go through all that pain? <laughs> like, it's nine months, you know? <laughs> to me, it's a long oh, yeah. time. Nine months is a mm-hmm. long time. It's a long, not really. You yeah. know what? You know what? I would say this nine months is a long time, but I promise you, being paralyzed, time go by so fast. I don't, oh, know, yeah. I don't know what it is, but I feel like nine months could go through like that, you know, so, mm-hmm. okay. Okay, but look, yeah. th- thank you for the information out there because there was somebody, Nikki, Nikki was the one that asked the question about, uh, um, uh, like, how was it, like, you know, like, being like, <laughs> being pregnant, yeah, being pregnant. Hey, Nikki. Yeah, so, shout out to Nikki. No, shout to- yeah, shout out to Nikki. I'm actually going to go to Chicago this weekend for the first time with it's gonna be my first time after my injury going out. Well, look, <laughs> well, look, be careful because I saw on the news this morning that Minnesota was in like uh, like one of the craziest oh. snowstorms right now. So look, please just be yep. careful. Be careful when it comes <laughs> to traveling out there. So. Oh yes, I will, and I I was actually I'm actually supposed to see Nikki, but I we haven't um like set it up really good yet, so I have to message her as well. Okay. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. is it snow that bad? Is it like like crazy? Like, is it like a lot? Yes, the roads are really bad. Um, my friend was just telling me that some some places are gonna uh, close tomorrow. She works at a bank, and her bank uh, branch is gonna close tomorrow because of the weather. So it is really bad. The schools here don't close unless um, it's really snowing a lot. And my kids didn't have school today or tomorrow, and they didn't have school on Monday or Tuesday. So. I've been going crazy. <laughs> well, you want to know, uh, I think I saw that they said that that Minnesota has gotten, like, more snow, like, I guess today than the last, like, 20 years or something like that. Like, like, like y'all got, like, the most snow. Like, I don't know. It's, it's something I heard. But I was like, damn, that's crazy because that's where Edith is, Edith is at. And I'm about to do a podcast earlier today. So <laughs> I was telling my wife that earlier. So it's kind of crazy. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Trust me. I, yeah. Look, I, li- I lived in the snow before. I, uh, I used to live in Colorado. So I know how it can oh, be. Okay. So, yeah, so I know how the snow can be, mm-hmm. but I couldn't imagine how the snow 
could be and then also being in a wheelchair. So does does that get difficult sometimes? Like the weather out there, like how, how does that get for you? And if you can, can you kind of you know like give us a little insight on that as well? Well, I mean, hmm. first of all, I hate wearing jackets, and it gets like below free below zero here. So it's like it's either I'm I can move with my wheelchair or I I wear a jacket. And if I don't wear a jacket, I get sick. So it's like, I, I really don't try going out there because I mean, um, my chair gets full of snow and then it gets stuck. And people here, I've noticed um, that they don't clean the ramps very well. Like they'll just clean it a little bit. And then, or, but then when the, when the, when like um, they clean the streets, everything goes on the ramps again. So it just, it really sucks being in the, in the winter here. Um, I would, don't want to spend the rest of my life here but i don't know i don't know anywhere else that i mean this place is home for me and my family's here okay if you if you could move where would you want to move to or where is your like dream location see it's like i don't know because if it's not hurricanes it's tornadoes if it's not tornadoes it's earthquakes and it's just like i don't know <laughs> mm, well you want to know what i've i've lived in I, okay, so Colorado was real blizzardy. I like I do like that, but like I don't think I could ever go back being in a wheelchair as far as like to live. Um, when it comes to hurricanes, it's a like uh, again I couldn't imagine that either because you know like you know sometimes you got to deal with the power being out. Like one time we had the power out. For a whole mm-hmm. week, but I wasn't in a wheelchair at the time. But the power was out for a whole week, mm-hmm. and that sucked. Um, you know, so it, and then it's a lot of cleanup too. And then like sometimes like you, the windows break and like that gets kind of shitty. But as far as like living out here in California, like I do get like we do get the occasional earthquake, but to me it ain't really nothing like bad. Mm-hmm. It is a little weird when it happens though. But I mean, I don't know. I think mm-hmm. I would rather deal with that than have to deal with like hurricanes and tornadoes and the snow. Yeah, yeah, because I I don't know that. Like, it's just, it's just to me that's just a lot more scarier, you know. But I ain't gonna lie, these wild yeah. these wildfires that they be getting out here they get a little crazy too, though. So <laughs> that's one of them things that you gotta worry about too, though. So because they move fast. So yeah, actually, my my dad is re- gonna retire this year, and they want to go back to Mexico, and they were like, "Oh, why don't you guys come and live with us?" And I'm just like. That's a no go. I'm I'm scared to go back to Mexico, and it's not because of like anything of the news or you know the news over exaggerates all, all the time. It's more um, if anything is accessible, and how insurance works over there, and just things like that. So that's what scares me. I, I said I'll go visit you, but I will not go live over there. So yeah, so. yeah, that's one thing. Uh, going to another country and being able to see. I would say the lack of accessibility for people in wheelchairs, it gets a little scary sometimes. So, like, even, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, going on vacation somewhere where it's not, like, that accessible, it can get scary. I would say for somebody who is maybe newly injured, they might not know how to maneuver around, like, it can get a little scary. So, you know, like, yeah. I've, like I've been in Mexico as well, and... um Again, it's just not as accessible as it is here because here, you know, places have to be ADA compliant. So it's like they got to have ramps. They got to have wheelchair parking, they, you know, all, all that stuff. And and I do feel like that in some parts of Mexico, they do, mm-hmm. you know, in the touristy spots and, you know, maybe like the bigger places. Yeah. But it's not going to be everywhere. You know, if you go into like the small cities and it, it really ain't going to be like that. And then also the ground too, like, you know, like sometimes mm-hmm. you get cobblestone places and phew, that gets horrible right there. So. <laughs> yeah okay okay so so going back going back a little bit uh going back to that day whenever you get to the hospital when do you finally wake up from you know like passing out like 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 when do you actually wake up is it a couple days a week or anything i want to say it was a couple days i remember my family was there the first time, the first time that I really woke up and I realized that I could not walk, um, I want to say my brother went, yeah, I have two, I have a brother and a sister and um, my brother went and he, 
he was asking somebody that was doing something to me. Like my eyes, I remember I was still, I was sleeping. Like I was kind of waking up and he asked, he was like, is she going to be able to walk? And the nurse just said, no, she can't move her legs. And that's when it clicked like, damn, I can't walk. I remember I didn't open my eyes. I just went back to sleep again. And that evening, my dad and my husband went to see me and like, I was crying. Like, I was like, is it, I, oh, I had the dragon. I couldn't talk. Already, they had put in a tray, um, and I just was writing everything out, crying. And my dad's like, "No, you're gonna walk. This is just temporary." And my dad's always like that. You gotta do it. And I believed him. Like I honestly believed. Him. I believe I, I, I really wanted to believe I, that I was gonna walk. So, um, yeah, I believe it was a couple of days in because my. I got injured the 28th of May, and my sister had uh, her do- my niece, her daughter, in on June 8th, and she still went to the hospital to see me pregnant, and she, I believe it was like a day before she gave birth, so it was like right around there. So it took like about a week, I want to say, for me to wake up like fully, get out of all the drugs that I, well, everything that I was on. Yeah. And mm-hmm. do you remember who was there? When you initially woke up, when you finally opened up your eyes, like who was there? Sometimes a lot of this stuff is such a blur to me to this day. Um, they give you some strong medication, mm-hmm. so some of it is a little bit of blur, especially especially whenever you coming out. It's like you get little glimpses of things. Like me, I just remember opening up my eyes and just seeing my mom. And then, like, I think I like yeah. I went back to sleep for a couple more hours. So that medication that they be giving you to, you know, to date, you really do mm-hmm. really be powerful. So I, so trust me, I definitely understand. Yeah. And then again, I can relate when it yep. comes to that, that trait too. That trait was, it was, it, <laughs> ooh, ex- especially when they had to clean it. Yeah. Like, 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 I don't know how that was for you, uh-huh. but, but, but it was the weirdest feeling. Like, like, literally, I would be sitting there and I could barely breathe. And then they'd be like, do you want us to clean it? I'd be like, no. They'd be like, well, we got to. And then and then they would do it and do like the little circle. And it would be the weirdest, nastiest feeling ever. Oh, it sucks so bad. So yes. like, I understand what that trach life is like because not that many people that I talk to have to had to get a trait so just talking to somebody who Mm -hmm. had to get one it's like i know all right i know i know yeah we were were actually talking about it in the group chat one day and we were like oh we were on i on like i a nice diet i remember and i was telling them that i couldn't i i whenever my kids would go to the the hospital i'd ask for apple juices for them and i'd like sip them like completely all by myself like even though my kids wanted some i was like nope i gotta have them you know or i'd wait like they'd give me ice at night and i'd wait for the all the ice to melt and i drink the whole like cup of water it was that bad <laughs> well, look, what's so crazy what's so crazy is I just did a podcast with somebody who who he had to get a trade to, and I told him the same thing. What I would do is I would ask for the cup of ice because you get it with the sponge, and I would just mm-hmm. wait for the ice to melt, and I would drink it like that. Oh. Yeah, I would just I would just wait I for the. I forgot ice about that damn sponge. Yeah, uh, the one yeah. they gave me was like a, a little white <laughs> stick with the green sponge. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I, I would just wait for the ice to melt, and I tell. But that's why you see one thing. I feel like why everything for me, as far as like bowel care and like uh, like with my bladder, why I feel like it goes so well is because I drink so much water, and you know I tell mm-hmm. people I I really only drink the water like that because I craved water so much, not being able to have it, not being able mm-hmm. to drink, not being able to eat. You know, even though you do get that little the little feeding tube in your nose, it's still not the same as eating. You know, but I would say even more than eating, mm-hmm. even more than wanting to eat, I just craved water. And it was like even like me just sipping yeah. just sipping the water whenever the you know the ice would melt, it would like it was like the greatest like just uh, like just sense of relief. All right. <laughs> it, but it's so crazy it that was, yeah. it's crazy that you have that I get somebody that can relate to that because like not that many people understand how that feels. Like it is really mm-hmm. it is a horrible feeling just not being able to drink, not being able to eat. Um just, you know, wait for that ice to melt. I I can I can understand. Like 
I did that. Yeah. I did that. I did that. And uh, even the trach, it's, it's shitty. Um, them cleaning it out. Even when they finally pulled it out, it was weird. Um, it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it was, it was a nasty feeling. And then you got this big old hole in your neck. Mm -hmm. You see me, I, got the, I still got the scar right there. Mine is really little. I don't know. I thought I was going to get a bigger scar, but mine isn't. Yeah, so... You see, you see, yours kind of blends. I know. Mhm. Mm it's it's probably the makeup. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, okay. Yeah. No, but I mean, yeah. Other people, I see other people's, and you know, I used to complain about my scar, and I see others, and I'm just like, yeah, I shouldn't complain. I'm already, it, I'm, it's already better than, I don't know. You know what? I, you know, so. to me, the scars weren't really a big deal, but I do hear, you know, like the female, mm -hmm. the females, they talk about, you know, like they might mention like a scar or two, and like I do kind of see it does kind of hit a little bit more harder when it comes to you know scars and stuff like that when it comes to the female. So I can I can kind of understand. To be honest with well myself, it's like I don't really well. It's just this this scar, but uh, like I had. Um, I don't know what they're called, but I had like tubes inside my chest on my, my on the sides of me. Yes, chest tubes, and I have a I have like four scars of those, and then I had to get a one of my lungs actually had a lot of liquid and blood in it, so I had to get a surgery for that. And I have a big scar in my back. Then I got half of my bullet removed and from in my back too, and um, and I don't complain about this. What I complain about a lot is about the weight that I gained. Yeah, the weight that I gained is just something else. Uh, it's you know what for me, for me it was the complete opposite. Really? For me, I lost like a hundred pounds. Wow! I lost yeah, literally. I lost like a hundred pounds, and like mm -hmm. I was like, like I just, I got small. Like like literally, it was it was literally scary. People see and people see right now. Like you probably think that I was on drugs, but that's how much weight I lost. Because even after mm -hmm. that, because I had to get, I had to get my lung removed because they said that, they said that, I guess they were just really just focused on saving my life. So they was like, look, yeah. we can't really worry about the lung like that. Like, we don't have time to worry about the lung. So let's just take it out. He can live with one lung. Mm -hmm. Let's just take it out. And then let's focus on what we need to focus on. So they took my lung out. They took my right lung out. And, um, wow. and you see for me, cause I know you said you had a scar on your back. You see, I got the chest tube scars, but I also got scars like that, like below and above it a little bit where it looked like that they started to cut, but then they was like, nah, let's go ahead and go down a little bit more. So they, <laughs> yeah, so it was like, it was like, 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 yeah, it looked like a mistake, you know? Uh -huh. So uh, I got those, but then they also had to cut me open. So I got like a big T, like a big T. So mm -hmm. going all the way down, like kind of like towards my crotch a little bit. Like maybe a little, mm -hmm. like a like maybe like a inch to two inches below my belly button, um, and then it's like a it's like a like a going like this way as well. Mm -hmm. So 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 they cut you in the back, not in the front. No, I have all my scars in the back. Yes. Damn, I wish I wish I'd have had the one. I wish I'd have scars in the back. <laughs> I feel like it'd be, yeah. like it'd be it'd be a lot easier to deal with. I feel like because like for me it's like they cut like since they cut so close to my nipples, it's like 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 they're kind of numb a little bit. So it's like the uh, yeah. Okay. So so it's like yeah because they cut because it it's not close to it, but it is like really close to it. So it was like I lost sensation in like bo in like both of them. So it's like a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like I can't feel it. It's just that sensation is not there. So. But I, yeah, I, I got a big T. But this is the first time I ever hear about somebody getting, I would say, cut in the back versus in the front. So yeah, it was. Well, I have my scars are just on the sides, and then I just have the I have two on the back. So yeah. Okay, you, you know what? Most of your damage was probably like in that area. So I would say that's mm -hmm. probably why they went like that way versus for me they went in the front. So okay. Yeah. So so um. After you wake up and everything, how I know that you said that you do that you heard the doctor say that you won't be able to walk again. But how did they like initially come to you after you like fully wake up and everything and tell you that, hey, you're going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life? Like, how did they actually tell you? Because the stories I hear of how the doctors tell people is just like cut and dry. It's like they give you like, hey, mm -hmm. look, you're going to be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. Deal with it. Yeah. 
No, I I remember they came to um I don't know if you remember the like the piece of paper they come with and they they do test on you with like to see what you can move and what you can't move. The like the little pricky test with the little needle. Uh huh. Yes. And they did that to me, and then the the doctor I don't even know if she was a doctor or a nurse or whatever. She's just like, here, you're not gonna walk. For real? And I looked at I didn't know I did not know what the heck was going on. She just left, and then my right away my husband came in. I was like, she just gave me this paper, and I really don't understand what's going on. Like I had heard what my brother had asked the nurse, but I really did not know what was going on. And then my husband was like, this has to be wrong. He went to talk to them, and he's like, well, it says you're not gonna walk. So it just was just like that. Like they did that test, and here you go. You can't walk. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, not that I try to like take the attention from you or any other person that's in the witch out there, because I like I don't, because I, I understand what you go through, but sometimes people forget what our family goes through. Mm-hmm. So how would you say that your husband actually took the? the news of you being paralyzed. How would you say he took it? Mm, he was really stressed, to be honest, because, I mean, he lost his hair. Um, I started losing my hair, um, too. Yeah, no, like, he, to this day, like, it won't grow back, and I feel so bad because I know it was my fault. Um, well, look, the, look, I heard that they doing the hair thing down there in Mexico now. <laughs> they are. They really are. <laughs> It's I gotta like, tell him now that. <laughs> yeah, trust me. They out there um, doing it now, so. Okay, well, nice to know then. See, um, no, yeah, he he was really stressed, and he. I remember. I have just a couple of pictures of when he was in the hospital with the, my the baby, my baby back then, and he. You could see he he could he would not sleep. Um, he was at, like there was not a day that he did not go see me at the hospital or at rehab. Like he would go every single day. And, he, you know, we got so close to God. We, st- we would pray every day. We would read the Bible every day. Um, it just helped It helped our relationship a lot because we weren't we're doing really good. So, I mean, he just got really close to God. And he just, like, he was, like, hold on to God because that's, that's the only way we're going to get through this. And, I mean, here we are. Twelve years later. <laughs> Uh, you know yeah. what is is I feel like that when it comes to women and men, I feel like that as I hear the stories, it's completely night and day. Versus, I feel like that the women that are in relationships with people before their spinal cord mm-hmm. injury and then after is more so like they stick together. Versus the men, a lot of the times they do break up with the person that they were with whenever they had the spinal cord injury. Me being one of those people. You know, I wasn't mm-hmm. like I, like I'm not with the person that I was with when my spinal cord injury happened, but I feel like I do hear that a lot more. It's just like I, like some like I feel like that, and I like I hate to say this, but I feel like that the women really can't take it versus the men being able to take it. I feel like, but mm-hmm. I but I do hear sto- but I'm not but I do hear stories of of women staying and you know just fitting the role well. You know, so I yeah. mean, but I do hear more stories of you know women and their husbands staying together versus you know men and their wives staying together, or men and their girlfriends staying together. So, mm-hmm. okay, okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, how did your family uh, uh like take the news? Like, what, how would you say that they? How would you say that they kind of took it? Well, everybody was mad. Everybody was mad. Everybody was just like, "Why did you go out that night?" You know, and it got to the point where my mom would start blaming me, like, it was your fault. And I know it wasn't my fault. Like, you know, I, I, it's straight in my head, I know it wasn't my fault. And it was just, like, I don't know, there's something inside of me that told me, like, no, this wasn't your fault. And don't ever feel guilty for it. And even though my mom, at times, would get frustrated, she would make me feel guilty. I knew it wasn't my fault. And it would just make me mad because I knew she was wrong. My dad was always sad because he's like, I... I loved running. I wasn't. I was actually in track in high school, and um, and my dad was just always like, I never pictured my little girl like this. Like she, she was a a track star, like you know, type of thing. And it, I at the when I got injured, I wasn't speaking to my sister. It really bonded our relationship. Um, I speak to her every day ever since. 
there's not a day that we don't speak um we got really close and my brother too like it was the first time i ever split i ever had ever seen my brother cry like for me and he's like really he's really tough he's like really macho kind. I, I, I say real macho okay yeah and so he would go to the hospital and i remember once i was like warding out take me with you and he just started crying and bawling his eyes out and hugging me and he was like soon soon we'll come and get you you know but so it, it i mean it was mixed emotions i guess my mom was more mad because she said that why would why did i go out that night that i should have stayed home you know trying to blame it on me but other than that um everybody else has gotten over it yeah i feel like that sometimes that you know maybe the the emotions and, and the stress you know, some it's just some people handle it differently, and some people, I would say, they relay their pain a little bit differently. You know, so, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes they say stuff that they probably shouldn't say, and it's it's just that maybe they're just a little bit just frustrated, and, and sometimes like they don't. I would say, I don't know, like my dad. Sometimes, like my dad would say, um, he would just say like weird stuff, like uh, like sometimes, like if I wasn't talking or whatever, he would try to say stuff to get me mad. And then, like, 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 you know, like looking back on like us talking, he would just, you know, like he would, like he would tell me now, like, no, I just wanted a reaction out of you, you know. And then at the same time, you know, it's like yeah. he's dealing with something as well. Like even last night, you know, he texted me and uh, he told me he was like, uh, what did he say? He said, like, I miss like the I miss the old times or something like that. And I and and like I I texted mm -hmm. him back and I just told him I was like I was like, look, we can't we can't dwell on the old times, but just know we got some fun times ahead of us. You know, look, just know we yeah. got some amazing times ahead of us. That's exactly what I told him. And, you know, I know, I know it's, I know it's one of those things where, you know, like sometimes, like you do dwell on the past a lot, but trust me. Yeah. You still here and you still got some amazing days ahead of you. You know, you still got your kids going to high school, going to college <laughs> to look forward to them graduating. So, you know, but I know, I know yeah. some, sometimes, you know, the family can kind of take it the wrong way as well. And then, like, you know, the whole time you're just like, well, I'm the one that's in the wheelchair. I'm the one that's paralyzed. I'm the one that has to deal with this. But it's just sometimes they really don't know how to take it. And, yeah. I, you know, I do hear that sometimes as well. So, okay. So, um, how would you, how, what, how long was it before, you know, after you waking up to the point where you're going to therapy now? Because I know you had to be in the ICU for a little bit because you said your aorta got hit, two of your lungs got hit. You know what? Skip that question. How long were you in the ICU for? <laughs> um, I want to say I was in the ICU for three weeks, and then I got moved to another hospital where I guess they, um, I mean, the floor that I was on, it was all just for people that had tregs or that had things like that, like uh, resp respiratory uh, problems and systems that were going on. And, um, yeah, I got moved really quick from there because they just took it out, like, a week later. That was the weirdest thing to talk again, too. It was. It um. was. They, said your <laughs> they said your voice might be different. But you know what? Hold up. I got one, I got one more thing that I'm curious about as well because, you know, me and you kind of had the same, you know, similarities. <laughs> how was it for you learning how to breathe again? Because I know, I know you had to be on, like, a ventilator uh, mm -hmm. at least. So I know... Having to learn how to breathe again, having to even just sit up in the bed, I'm pretty sure you was like out of breath, sweating, all types of stuff. So how was that process learning, having to blow into the little tube and the ball going up? I know you had to probably do that. <laughs> you know, so. Yes, I hated it. <laughs> it, was, it was difficult. Um, so how was yeah, that for you? Um, it was hard. It was hard, but I mean, I just... I was super scared to not be able to breathe. Like, that was just my main, like, I was just like, what if I, I have to be stuck on this ventilator for her? Yes. Um, so it was super scary and it was hard, but I mean, I, at one point, uh, somebody, came, I don't know, I don't know what they were, if they were technicians or, I don't know what the heck they were. They would, they would come into my room and they would like turn on a machine, like to make my, something to make like my um, lungs work work uh like they would lower it and raise it i'm sorry i don't know what the heck is going what the heck was going on i don't um and at one point i was telling my husband i don't want to do this like i was like really mad and like wording it out like i don't want to do this and the guy was like look this is what this is doing 
like it's making her lungs stronger and it's made and like this is what i'm doing and you know explained it to him and he's like you gotta do it it's gonna make your lungs stronger and it's the quicker you do that the quicker that comes out he's like i know you want to eat so i was just like well i gotta stick to it. it but it was really frustrating and i was super scared not to be able to breathe on my own again to be honest mm -hmm. trust me uh i <laughs> I, I, I could i could still feel it um what I would say what really got me through it was my mom bought me this little itty bitty fan. And and like it felt like that was it gave me life. It gave me life because sometimes really? I'd be like I'd be like uh cause cause like you said, like they would turn the they would turn the percentage down uh to where mm -hmm. to where yeah. now, so to where now your lung is working and then it's like oh, i can't breathe i can't breathe and it's sometimes i sometimes i would be like like i'd be like buzzing the nurse because i'm like i can't breathe can you turn it back up because sometimes <laughs> they would turn it down without you knowing and then she'd be like well is that a hundred percent i'd be like well i can't breathe so, so, yes. I, so i know how it feels and that that was one of the most shittiest things too because you know like i would be in the bed just pouring sweat because just just trying to breathe and then it was one of those things where i really just sometimes like i would just have to like just buckle down and just be like just don't panic don't panic because that it is one of the scariest mm -hmm. things not being able to breathe and you want to panic so much because I, like like I, I can still feel it to this day it's like oh like the only thing i can kind of relate to is just being underwater and then you know coming up to the top and like you like you're almost there but you're not there yet yes. <laughs> you know <laughs> and it's just like i need to get to the yes, top uh, yes. yeah so okay okay so so when you find so when you finally start you know you know now that we're speaking about it sorry i'm not trying to cut you off <laughs> no but now that we're speaking about it it's it's like you it's bringing back all those feelings like i had forgotten a lot about all those feelings and it's just like what the heck no oh, i don't I remember this <laughs> i don't you know what yeah. you know what it's because you're talking to somebody who can kind of relate to what you're going through so it's like sometimes you kind of remember things that your your mind literally just wanted to forget and you don't really you know like mm -hmm. th there's nobody that can kind of jump start those memories again so when you finally talk to somebody and you know they went through similar situations you you're able to remember little things like you know like like the little sponge you know it's it's like like i can still mm -hmm. i can still see that sponge to this day you know, and like I remember just, yeah. I remember taking it out. Like I remember when it finally melted, I took it out and I just like, uh, I just threw it out the way. I was like, yeah, <laughs> and I just started sipping the water. Like, but it was just, mm -hmm. it was just one of those things. Like, just I just could not wait for the ice to melt in that little cup. So, I, look, trust me, I can understand. I can understand. Oh yeah. It, you know, just certain smells. Just sometimes I eat something and I'd be like, man, that's because they would come in every day. And I had the, I had the trach in, I had the feeding tube in my nose, and God knows what else I had on my body. But what they would do is they would come and squirt this pink liquid up my nose every single day. I don't know what it was for, but they was it was a warm liquid, and they would squirt it in my nose every day, and then mm -hmm. I would swallow it. And like sometimes, like I might eat something or taste something, and it might taste just like that liquid. And I'm like, damn, like I remember. You know, and it just it just brings me mm -hmm. back. So really, yeah, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and like so, and like even it, like mm -hmm. even to this day, I talk to people and I might remember something that I never remember before. But since I'm talking to somebody about, it, I'm able to remember that and you know, heart back on it again. So Whew. yeah, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's just tough. speaking right now, I was just remembering. It is tough, and I was just remembering um, since. Uh, they had to do a lot of x-rays and every morning they would come and do like move my body and I can still remember it. that pain was I don't ever want to feel that pain again I remember how it, I don't know I don't remember exactly how it painful it was but I know it was really painful because I hated it every morning I just hated seeing them come in yeah and it just brings a lot of memories talking to people it was so crazy was I was gonna bring that up earlier but like I, like I, I didn't because I haven't spoke to anybody that 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 really ever brought that up. But I would be in the bed every mm -hmm. single day, 
And I don't know what time their day started, but they, they either came in at 4 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning. And they would do x-rays in the bed to where they stuffed the thing behind my back. And then, you know, yeah. I, would be, yeah, I would be doing the x-ray in the bed every single day. And it's just like, what the fuck? why are they doing this x-ray every single day? And it's just like, man, I was trying mm-hmm. to sleep. Like, it was like, damn, I was just able to fall asleep now y'all up in here because i felt like Mm -hmm. like even sleeping in the hospital bed when i finally woke up it was it was very hard for me to go to sleep because like you're not used to sleeping on your back you know like that every single day you know and you know you know normally you can get on your side or your stomach but when you got the spinal cord injury and it's like new like that you're like frozen in the spot and it's just like it's, it's hard to do anything so it's like it's like once you finally fall asleep mm-hmm. and you wake up, they come in there every day. OT, PT coming in up in there. And it's like, man, I ain't trying to do that today, you know, <laughs> you know. But now they got they got to come in there and do it. So I can I can understand. Yeah. yeah. So that's crazy. So how was it? How was it for you starting uh, the OT and PT? Um. So the second hospital, because uh, the second hospital was in before I actually went to um, rehab was they want, they like some days they would ask me, do you want to get out of the bed or do you want to do PT and OT here in the room? Of course I want to do it in the room. I want to, I want to lay on the bed and do a PT and OT. And it was like, I, sometimes they, uh, until the end of, of the, of the time that I was at the second hospital, they actually would make me get out of bed because they said that the place that I was going to was going to have me do, be in, out of bed like 90% of the time during the day. So they needed to get me ready for that. But but I hated it. I mean, it's like I'm I, I was I've, I've always been a really clean person and I hated the fact that I smelled bad, that people were around me, that I they wouldn't even get showers half of the time. Uh, Cuz I had one of those what are those things called? Um I had a thing on my on my that would clip together. Like it was like for so my bones wouldn't break or something. Yes, I had a brace, and, and I had to? to wear it all the way up to my neck. It just had a hole here for the for the trach when I had the trach in. I don't. Know. That's, I didn't. I didn't have one. I, I didn't have one like that. Oh, okay. See, I like it, I. I remember seeing other people with just the ones that go up to here. Or up to their chest, but mine was all the way up to here. I don't remember why they wanted it up, but um, I remember mine was like one of a kind, I guess. And um, they, I had to take a shower with that, and they didn't want me to take a shower after because it would get wet. And I hated getting up. I hated smelling. I just hated, you know, who who doesn't want to take a shower every day, you know? Yeah. So, unfortunately, um, I, unfortunately, I had to take bed baths forever. Really? Yeah, I had to take bed baths until. Let me see. For a while, I'd have taken for a while. And like you said, you do smell. You know, it's not the mm-hmm. it's not the best. See, I'm a clean person, so it's just like just having to go through that. It was it was a shitty feeling. It's, uh, it yeah, get, you know, it gets real emotional. Cause I remember my first shower, I cried because it was just really. It felt so good to be able to just to shower. Like to mm-hmm. where to where it's like now I can't even get out the shower, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like I don't want to even get out, no. but yeah, just not being able to shower for like months. I feel like uh, maybe it might have been like two months, three months. I couldn't take a shower, you know. So I was mm-hmm. I was just up in there yeah. with the little with the little foam liquid, you know. And it's it's not the best because you can't really wash your hair, you know. You, uh, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's. Uh, you know, now it's like talking about, like thinking back about it, it's disgusting to even talk about, but it's just like all the dead skin on your feet that like, mm-hmm. oh, it's yeah, disgusting. You're, no, but you're right though. You're right. <laughs> you're completely right. And again, you do like, like you say, you do smell, <laughs> you know, it's, it's horrible, mm-hmm. but you know, once you finally get that first shower is, it feels amazing. Uh, you know, you, yes, just, and you I, just appreciate I, it. And I remember I could I slept really good that night too after that shower. It felt just so good. I was just like, yes, thank goodness I actually slept. So Okay. Okay, so so when it comes time for you to, you know, like get out the hospital, you know, like now that you're kinda of done with O T and P T, how is that how is that feeling for you? Like are you anxious to get out or are you a little scared to leave? Because I feel like that, you know, even though you don't wanna be there that's the place that's going to be the most accessible for you, I would say, mm-hmm. 
as far as like anywhere, as far as even going home. So even going home, you know, you want to go home so bad, but once you get there, it kind of feels like a different world because nothing's really accessible. So, you know, how was it for you? Was you excited to go home? Was you nervous to go home? You know, like how was it for you? I was ready to go home to my kids. Um, but like, I remember saying this the day that I was going to leave to somebody else that was there. Um, I was like, it feels like you're bringing a new baby home yet you don't know what to do with the baby. Like, I compared it to that. I've compared it to bringing my kids home. But, oh, no, I remember this. I'm sorry. This is what I said. It feels like I'm bringing a baby home, but I'm not bringing a baby home. I have to do, I have, I have to figure things out on myself now. And I don't know what, sometimes what I'm going to do. Do you have kids? I don't have kids. Not yet. No. Oh. Not okay. Yet. I'm, I'm, try, um, I'm trying right now, but it's a, <laughs> it's a difficult process when you're a guy in the woods. It's a little. It's difficult. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, understandable. But it was just. It's just like you're. Uh, that's just how I compared it because it was just. Okay, I'm going home, but what now? They just throw you out. Like, well, they don't throw you out, but they just like send you out into the world, and sometimes you don't even know who to call or where to reach for help or what, like, what to do. Yeah, look, some people get sent out and they don't have wheelchairs. Like, they take their mm-hmm. hospital wheelchair back, you know? Um, wow, yeah. Yeah, so trust me, some people get sent out with, without wheelchairs. So, <clears throat> yeah, it could, it could be a little uh, frustrating. So, you know, uh, when you finally get home, like, how do you feel? Like, like is your is your house, I would say, open to where, you know, like, you're able to maneuver a wheelchair? Or, like, how was that, like, how was that for you adjusting back into the into your own home before i got to go home i actually had to go i got was able to get home visits um just be at home all day so the first time that i went home i really i cried my eyes out well it wasn't my home it was because we were living in an apartment um it was actually my parents and i went just everybody like my whole family was at my parents and we had a good time but i was really sad i I, I mean, it was accessible. They um, put in a ramp and stuff, but I was just sad I couldn't. I mean, it wasn't my home anymore. It was home, but it wasn't my home. I don't know if it makes sense. It just, it was different. I couldn't do the things that I could do normally in that house. I couldn't go up and down the stairs. I couldn't just run around in the yard with my kids anymore or, you know. Um, yeah, it was just different. But the only thing that was really different, because like I said, I went to my mom, my parents after I got out of rehab. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that was different was that that was hard was the shower, because I was so used to you know taking showers more often now, and then the shower wasn't ready. But I was just ready to get out of rehab. So I said I was like I don't care if the shower is ready or not. I need to get home now for my to my babies, and um. And it took like about three weeks for the shower to be ready. And it was just really hard for me to shower because, I mean, my left arm has always been super weak after my injury. And um, it was just hard to transfer since the beginning. Do you do, do you use transfer boards at all? Yes, I do. Mm. There, do, do, you, do you ever feel like that you need a lift? I'm not there yet. <laughs> Well, no, yeah. I, I was only asking because I, I, me and somebody was trying to give one away a few, like a few months ago. Oh. A guy knew he, he was trying to give okay. one away. He was like, "Hey, can you help me? I try to get this way." So that's the only reason why I asked. Oh, I ain't want you to feel oh, that yeah. way. And I know that just one little thing, one little thing, could really help you with your confidence and you know just just getting back out to help you with that independence. You know, so if I got extras, I just try to give it away because there's it no point in just holding it. You know, so yeah, <clears throat> okay. You know, speaking of confidence, I just want to give a little shout out to the group because just that week before the group started, I was super depressed. I was like, I, I mean, I get medication to sleep, but I never take it and because I can't like with the baby and I had just looked at it so much and I was just like, wow, what if I take it? Like, I'm just so done with life. Like, I was just so done with life. I was just, then, you know, the only thing that was in the back of my head, it was, like, my kids. Like, my kids are going to need me. Exactly. And then Chino was the one that put me on the group. Well, he was like, if you guys want to join the group. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I I joined it. And then I 
I, I mean, you'll see that I comment um, a lot on there and it makes me happy it, seeing uh, people motivate each other. One of the guys actually, yeah, Ismael, he's, um, he's a quadriplegic. He, he started motivating me to go to the gym. Um, he's just like, wow, like, you know, I have hand functions and you have less than me and you're doing it. Why can't I do it? And it was, um, yeah, he started motivating me. I mean, he goes every day. And it's just like, I'm a mom, but I'm a, I'm a mom. I have a lot of th more things going on, but I mean, I can always make time for it, I guess. Yeah. You know, so Nikki is another one too. She's, she's so nice and she's great out there. So it, there's a lot of people that are very nice on, in that group. So shout out to them. Shout out to them. Yep. <laughs> Nikki and her sister, they're both, they're both amazing people and you know, like mm -hmm. again, j just to see how they was out there moving around at the Rolex experience, it was it was really cool to see because you could tell that they were really having a good time. You know, um, mm -hmm. just I would say it was me being around people that were in wheelchairs. It was something that I kind of stayed away from um, mm -hmm. for the longest time. But you know, some you know, but just being around other wheelchair users, it was. It was it was really comforting, and I really did not expect that. It was it was really amazing just to see other people just like me. Even though everybody there was was women that were wheelchair users, I was the only guy that was in a wheelchair. Um, but mm -hmm. but just to be able to see that and experience that was really was really amazing to see. And again, like I said, it was an experience. And you know, every woman that I talk to that I come across. Uh, that don't even know anything about the Rolex. Um, I always try to, I always try to um shout out the Rolex experience and you know what they got going on because you know it, I feel like it does help a lot of women you know gain their confidence back and you know it's just just to see what you know Chelsea and all them are doing. Um, it's it's, it's really cool to see you know and I know it gives a lot of women motivation out there you know and it, yeah. it's really it's really cool because they you know they they doing big things out there so. You know, hey, look, if they can do it, you can do it, you know, yeah. and again, you know, I do see a lot of quadriplegics at the gym all the time, you know, today's my off day, so, uh, I was so, <laughs> I was like, so, yeah, so Wednesday's my off day, so it just, yeah, <laughs> I'll be going hard in the gym too, so, but, um, yeah, just, I understand how it is, how it can be to really pack on the pounds sometimes too, and, you know, just the, the transfers get a little bit, a little harder, you know, but, the the gym is definitely beneficial. It's just you know I feel like as far as like for us wheelchair users, um, and maybe even mm -hmm. women. Period. It's just you gotta. I would say maybe maybe find somebody to go with and um just learn some workouts. You know you know. But at the same time, you know if you can't go to the gym, I would also recommend you know a resistance bands. Um, just look at yeah some bands. Um, <clears throat> and you could do a lot of workouts with resistance bands. It's just I feel like people don't really know. Like know all the workouts that you can really do with them, but you can do a lot, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And I would definitely highly suggest the resistance bands because you could do a lot with that and <clears throat> build up a lot of strength with that too. So, yeah. Whew, okay, so, um, <laughs> okay. I mean, shit, we done damn near talked about everything. Um, yeah. Uh, is there is there anything that I missed that you will you know that you want to talk about, or is there anything that you know that you want to ask me? No, to be honest, I don't. I I should have wrote down some questions, but no, you I did. Don't. You wrote some down? No, I said should have. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's fine. Look, I, I hate answering questions, yeah. but no. Oh, um, really? No, I really don't. I really don't. I try to. I try to be there for the people but, as possible. Because I, um, I appreciate y'all coming on, like talking to me and telling me y'all stories. So I have no problem answering y'all questions. Mm -hmm. No, but I mean, how does it feel after 12? Did you say 11, 12 years? No, it's about to be 11. Trip? About to be 11. 11, see? How do you feel? Like, do you feel like you have it all under control? Or is there still, it, or is there still crappy days that you're just like, wow, why? Like, why did this happen? Um, I feel like I had a lot of those days at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I don't feel like I really... I deal with that much anymore. Um, I guess I, I really feel like I'm just so grateful to be here um, to where I feel like that, that kind of overshadows everything. So even, you know, when I do have a crappy day or if I don't feel like getting up or, you know, like just sitting up in the bed just feels that much harder, you know, I'm just much more appreciative just to even be here to do that. 
So, mm -hmm. but, <clears throat> but to be honest, a lot of it came with um, just getting everything that I needed to get under control, under control. Um, it came with me yeah. get, getting my bowel care thing going right to where, you know, I do it in the morning every day, getting on a schedule. Um, just me, mm -hmm. me, me doing that. And I would say being more responsible when it came to my spinal cord injury, that just allowed me to really, I would say live a more normal life than just to be focused on everything. Because I feel like when you're just so worried about having an accident or, you know, like just, just having to deal with stuff like that, like you don't want to go out. So, you know, even, you know, that being in the back of your head, you know, it makes you a little bit more stressed out. So I would just say just getting on the schedule and doing what I got, doing what I have to do. So so then I'm able to do what I want to do. I would say that that just helped me out like mentally um, a lot. And <clears throat> again, we all have crappy days. We all have crappy yeah. days. We just got to figure out, you know, ways that we can go about um, coping with it. Um, again, do things that you love to do. You know, find, find find new things, try new things, um, join groups, you know, um, it's, it's just, see me, it, it, it just came in a form of just creating content. I found something that, that I enjoy to do and, you know, I just, I just, I've, I've stuck with that for, you know, for a while. Um, uh, Instagram was like my Instagram kind of blew up last year from doing like the funny, like funny videos, but you know, but what would get traction would, would be my um just like videos that I did like in my wheelchair and stuff like that like showing transfers and stuff like that that would get views but mm -hmm. then I will incorporate like the comedy in there and I would do reels that had to do with the comedy and you know um uh, me showcasing my life like that got views but when I started doing the comedy it got like a lot more views so it was just like I just found like little things on how to deal with it but again you know I, I have those days too so yeah. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it's it's, it's not easy. Way. It's not easy, but as you see people out there, you know, I see I see people that's been in a wheelchair longer than me. Like to me, ten mm -hmm. years, like to me, the ten years really don't even feel like that long. But a lot of people mm -hmm. I come across, yeah. they only been in a wheelchair for two years, eight months, three years, five years, six years. Like you know, it's I don't know. It it it, it doesn't it doesn't feel mm, like I don't know. It doesn't feel like. I, one thing that does bother me is knowing that I'm going to get to a point where I've been in a wheelchair longer than I was ever walking. I feel like that that's one thing that kind of, yeah. you know, and then thinking about old age, too. I feel like that that's one thing that, like, mm -hmm. like, those are the biggest things that I would say bother me. But other than that, I feel like I have everything under control. I mean, things do come here and there, like a curveball here and there. But, you know, yeah. once I got everything under control, like... I'd stop having those frequent visits to the hospital. You know, I, you know, mm -hmm. I will stop having those UTIs, you know, I stop, you know, just going through, I feel like, I feel like when I was going through like my, my stressful period, I was always in the hospital for something new. And once I kind of got over that and I was able to really like, just get everything under control. Like I haven't been to the hospital in forever. That's good. Yeah, so I mean, I, I like I said, I just try to recommend. I I feel like like for us guys, it's just once you kind of get everything under control, like it it really helps you live a real, like I would say, a more independent life. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like you're able to just go out there and, and just do a lot more for yourself. Um, again, like me driving again, you know that right there. I was just able, you know, once I once I you know I was able to get back behind the wheel i was like all right you know what because my wife was helping me with bowel care and it made me i was like you know what i'm gonna do this for myself let me i was like you know what let me let let me try this today by myself and i was just like you know what? i'm gonna be here for as long as i need to be here and mm -hmm. to be honest it went so well that first day that she never helped me with it ever again after that and then from mm -hmm. there from there, I, um, I was able to get in the shower by myself. So once I got mm -hmm. done with bowel care, then I would hop in the shower. And then so so that all uh, uh, culminated into me pretty much just getting up by myself, doing everything by myself to where I, now, now I can get in the shower, get out, get dressed, jump in the car and leave by myself, all that. So it's just, yeah. it just all getting what I, getting what I need to get under control. 
um, help me just live a more independent life and be able to really mm-hmm. just go about my day and just not feel like a burden to people. Um, I feel like that that's one yeah. of the biggest things. Like sometimes we feel like a burden because, you know, we need help. Like sometimes, you know, even to this day I do, you know, sometimes I was like, hey, babe, can you grab me that from the top or something like that? Yeah. You know, but to be honest, you know, I, I try to pick up where I can pick up and I would say, you know, like she she picks up, you know, on, on some things where, you know, it is a little shitty, but at the same time, you got to kind of understand, you know, it's a little bit easier that way. You know, it's yeah. e- it's easy. It, like, you see, for us guys, it's, it's a shitty feeling having our wife to get out and go pump gas. You know, it's a shitty mm-hmm. feeling, but it is a lot. It's just a lot. It's a lot easier for her to get out than her having to put my wood shit together and, you know, me go out there and pump gas. You know, just her pumping gas is just a lot easier, so. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't gone there yet, but hopefully one day I can tell my husband, get out and pump some gas. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I need to get back to driving. That's nah, on my to-do list. Trust me, you will. You will. We're going to get you there. Don't worry about it. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, look, I appreciate I appreciate you coming on, sharing your story. I know, I know women out there are going to listen to what you said about the whole pregnancy journey and everything and you know, they're really going to get some insight, you know, you know, I ain't gonna lie, you might scare them a little bit, but you might help out a lot of women out there. And I really appreciate it. And I just want to say thank you for coming on, sharing your story. I know, I know, trust me, somebody out here is going to, you know, use this for the better. And, you know, they're going to be able to relate to you. So just thank you for coming on, sharing yeah. your story. And yeah, thank you. Well, thank you for having me here. It was a surprise. I wasn't. I, I didn't know if I was ready to be honest, but I'm glad I did. That's what's up. That's what's well, up. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I like. I told you. I told you we're gonna be bad. Look, I told you you had nothing to be nervous about. It was gonna be cool. So it was all good. Yeah. It was all good. So I appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Thank you for having me. To be honest, I was like, should I do it? Should I not? But I'm happy I did. <laughs> okay. it's, it's, it, look, it's like therapy in a way, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. If you're ready to, if you're ready to tell it, then it can be, it can be a great form of therapy because you know, again, we can relate to a lot of the same things. You know, it just so happened that me and you not only can we relate in the spinal cord injury space like how most of us can, but we can relate into having a trach, you know, the lung, um, just having mm-hmm. to deal with like little things like that. So that's it. So yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you coming yeah. on. Thank you, and have a good one. All right, hopefully. Trust me, I know the people out there are going to enjoy this. So thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, well, you have a good one. You too. All right, bye.